My name is Alfred Monter and I'm going to show you guys how we get five guys, well one overweight, but I don't know how much these guys weigh. We're going to show you how this whole transom was rebuilt to get to this point. So jump up and down, it's not moving anywhere. Coño. Stay tuned. Hey, and this guy better not call me fat anymore, bro. Stop it. Let's go. Let's get this video started, guys. Alfred, zoom in on the termites. People can see. We found the nest here in the middle. I'll get it right now. Oh my God. Bro, they're everywhere. There was a whole nest here in the middle. It was a main nest. So this entire thing is completely, it would have been rotted out even more. Yep. The four termites would have been in the water together with the burrados. Oh my God, what a joy for the lionfish. <laughs> On the visual inspection, you can tell where the transom is bleeding out. So that's one of the first things I saw when the boat was up on the lift. Now, as far as the bracket, you can see where the corrosion, all the way in the far side here where it meets, you can tell, look, right here, see the rust? See uh -huh. the rust right here? Yeah. See the rust right here. So once I take this off, I can see on the back side and see how bad it is. Try to take a shot of this right here and show this corner bleeding. So these are indications that something's going on with the transom. When you see any of this bleeding going on, something's going on with the transom. It's absorbing water, it's holding in moisture. And those are pretty much the signs to look for. And this is an aluminum bracket. This is an aluminum bracket. Was this a, 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 a bracket that came with the boat or was this something that was uh, put after the fact? I'm not sure uh, if it's original on the boat. I can tell you it looks uh, old. It's pretty old, so there is a chance that it is. Um, but it's been on here for a while. Yeah. You can't be that forward. You have to be right. forward. Wait, wait. The public needs to understand they're getting ripped off left and right, and they were happy about it, and then they got no insurance on it. And their ship fell off the water like it did in the last the last weekend. So Okay, all right. Um you're not gonna be hunting them, are you? Are you gonna create no, a company? Well maybe, maybe, scuba, maybe guys, maybe diving? we just lost an opportunity at three brand new motors. 36 36 Carrera, it's a right? 36 Carrera from the 80s. From the 80s, guys. So, you know, it's it's a little powdery. Very. Very, very. very, For, very. From the 80s in South Florida, it's got a little... Uh, but now, one of the reasons... Oh, you reached out to me. Yes, I reached out to you. And he, he was being kind of funny and all that stuff, but this is kind of like a serious topic because what's happening is there's a huge boom in people because of the pandemic. They want to be out on the water, right? You get locked down. You can't do nothing. You want to be completely social distance from most people. And you say, what better way to social distance? Get out on the water. You can stay with your family. You're in your own little nucleus. So people have said, hey, I, I, don't, I can't get a boat right away because they're all on back order because there's not enough production or whatnot. Let's buy an old boat. We'll repower it. Now even some of the engines are not available. Correct. So, so... So what Al called me, he's like, hey, Alfred, we got to talk about this transom and make sure that these boats are ready to be repowered. And if they're not, let's show them what to look for so that somebody doesn't lose three engines, guys. I mean, right. we lost, I lost one be because we were just dogging it hard and, and the boats sheared off. Everybody saw that story. And if you haven't, I would encourage you to see that. It's completely different. Literally on our socials, Right? We saw the entire transom. Completely come off. Yes. Come off. So think about that. When you're just driving, you're having a good time, you just repowered, you spend all this money. Maybe you didn't insure it because it's an old boat. You're like, ah, oh, why am I gonna pay insurance? I'm good. And then your whole transom falls off. Your your Suzuki's, or in this case, can be a Mercury, it could be a Yamaha, or whatever it may be, were literally dangling off of the rigging. And then what? And then they fall off, they're just gone. And this is one of the things, you're investing your money, you're being happy about this whole process, and the company that's doing the repower for you is not taking the time to be able to inspect and make sure that this new power is gonna go on it, also the weight that's gonna go on it, yeah. it's gonna be able to be, you know, sustained by the boat that you got. Based on the year, make a model, you'll be able to know if this boat was made out of wood, how long has it been, uh, what's, you know, what kind of care was taken through all the time and process. So you wanna be able to inspect that before you repower this boat, or any boat. So, you know, I kind of 
don't like the fact that the company is just repowering and not taking the time to say, you know what, Alfred, let's, let's take a look at your transom. Let's see how solid it is. Make sure that that yeah. is, is uh, you know, it's in good shape, it's good standing to be able to support this new weight and power that you're going to add to the boat. Here you go out and you're enjoying your day and all of a sudden your engines are gone. Yeah. What kind of service is that? You know, so it's very dangerous. You're putting your life at danger. The repowering company is not taking that in consideration. And at the end of the day, there goes your boat, there goes your money, there goes yeah. everything. So. So, so look, we're going to go ahead and show and talk with Anthony. He's going to show us some of the points that he saw that were a problem. That right. the customer came to you guys because the customer noticed a the problem. Yes. Then you guys highlighted the problem and said, hey, listen, this is, this is a little bit more than what you expect, and let me show you why. So they started disassembling a little bit from inside the boat to get access to the transom so they can see. There's, there's boats, guys, that are very popular still out on the water, whether it's in the middle of the country or, or, or here in South Florida, wherever it may be, that have a lot of wood, and that wood is rot rotten in, in a lot of, in, a right. lot of cases. Right. And it doesn't take too much to kind of, you know, take maybe a seat apart like we did on this one. And you can start seeing already where the damages are. You can already know that once you put this new power in it, it's going to create a problem. And yeah. the last thing you want is for this customer to lose those engines and to cause may, may, serious injury. Maybe I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. You maybe you lose mind. a one, you two. recovery team. I have a whole right, recovery team. I'll call Rodolfo. I got Rodolfo right. on speed dial. I'll be like, Rodolfo, we got right. three. But in, in, just, in a serious note, it's just the fact is that yeah. it's really, it takes just like a few steps to be able to determine if you can, you know, if you need some repairs or not, if you need to be able to adjust, uh, you know, the, the prepare the boat for that kind of new power you're going to put on it right. and really go out there and enjoy it. So basically here, we're, we're receiving a lot of these uh, repairs now. We're, we're actually being known now for doing a hell of a job when it comes to removing all this wood and reinforcing these new transoms and so on and stringers to be able to support the new power. These boats back in the days were not built to match 30 years later and yeah. got the amazing power that we got right now. Yeah. So yeah, we're, we're doing it, we're making it there, but what is sad is that some of them are coming too late. Yeah. When they already have the full destruction, when they lose the engines. And one of the things is, we're now gonna be repowering as well for you know for our customers okay. of all, all brands suzuki's mercury's yamaha's but one of the things that we're emphasizing and focusing the most is can your boat handle it yeah and it's not let's make it there let's get it there to that point because it's cheaper to fix it than buying yourself another three hundred thousand dollar boat yeah well we'll come in and we'll do the repair that we've got to do and we'll make sure that when it gets repowered it's not going to fall apart now now anthony let me ask you a question what, what's going on here? Like, I'm looking at this, first of all, is that opening up or, or was that, I mean? Yes, this is opening up and what they did, I'm not sure who did it, but somebody came in and just filled it in with 5200, but that's no way to fix this problem. No way to fix this problem. Well, if somebody, fix, uh, I mean, put 5200, I mean, damn, at least run your thumb down there and make it look nice and smooth or something. I mean. We know everybody's not the same, man. You got your, uh, it is one of your, your specials here. All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and, uh, and show this whole process of this 36 Carrera. There's still a lot of these out on the market, right? There's a few still on the market. This is one of the older ones. This is an 88, 1988. OK. So um, it's really cool to get our hands on it and be able to work on it. Let me show it a little bit so they can see what we got. The boat is actually pretty quick. Uh, the customer told me that it runs um, 80 miles an hour. 80, so miles, 80 miles an hour, you want to make sure that your transom is reinforced. That's for sure. You know, from a distance, you're going to see the boat, you're going to think like, wow, that thing looks like a beast. It's incredible. It's beautiful. And then in the inside, it's, it's probably rotten to death. Yes. So. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, we're back here with the 36 Carrera. I want to show you guys uh, what it looks like when we got this top, seat, uh, top cap off, the rear bed seat. Um, now we're actually inside the boat. So uh, we're going to walk you through a couple steps, tell you what we found, and uh, show you a couple things here. Hold down. So, okay, once you took off this on the transom, everything that was there, you told me you were going to cut all this off. What did you see? Because I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of rot on the floor. Yeah. Um, 
explain to what, what you saw when you opened this up. Well, the first thing we saw was a lot of termites. So we fumigated before we even cut the piece out because it was just termites all over the place. Okay. So we did fumigate. We did that over the weekend. Now we came in and we started by cutting out the whole top. Once we cut it out, we were able to go inside and see where the rot's coming from. So I'll show you guys a few cuts that are on the, on the stringers. I've bought it. I'm going to show you some exposed wood that wasn't laminated properly. And it seems like this is the second time they fixed this boat. At least twice they cut it. I'll show you guys what I found there with that as well. And then I can show you on the outside what was happening with the trash. So right. I'll show you guys how the bracket was actually getting heated up by the hall. All right, let me get in there. Let me show them that view. And uh, guys, look at, look at all the... So a lot of termites then. A lot of termites. That's one of the disadvantages of wood. There you go. So our voices are going to be a little bit muffled. That we we got to be as you know as so as as as, so as, as noise and stuff here. All right. So let's go ahead now that we actually have everything off. It, it, tell me what's going on with this spr uh, stringer here. Well, this stringer here was added on. This was something they did afterwards, I guess when they saw they were having an issue or whatnot. They came in and they glassed this right over. And look, you can see guys, look, I haven't taken nothing off yet, look. Look at this. That's how they laminated. They never scraped under and laminated correctly, so all of this was loose this whole time. So they, thought, right? they, they thought they were doing something, but they weren't doing anything. It wasn't properly done. That was more to the eye than anything else, because it wasn't really doing anything. But the idea is correct the problem is that the work right. that they did was wrong you're right all right so so th th they were trying to make some some they were uh, trying to make a stringer here so you can see where it cracked it's no good everything's cracking where they look you guys can see that's where they laminated none of this is sticking the whole floor is moving you see that wow that's what's holding all of this together so so right here that line right there is what's holding this transom together Right now, this is the reinforcement they did to hold this together. Yeah. Wow. So this, this thing would have been on, on, on the socials. It would have been three Verados on social media swimming. Yeah. Oh my God, and guaranteed. You would have had three to go and pick up, not one. I would have gone, I would have gone back. I know you would have. <laughs> All right, let's show them some of that wood because now that this is open, we can show them here also the way this is an older boat, so it, it had wood. Well, somebody redid this boat, the way they redid it um, wasn't properly. They never glassed the back of the wood, so if you can show here the wood. I did, I did, I just showed. The just back show of the wood has no glass, so it's just exposed and it's not treated wood. Yeah. So this is not going to last nothing. Then down here you can see where they try to reinforce and they put a 2 by 4 This is a 2 by 4 beam they put across. That 2 by 4 is rotten, it's no good anymore. That's no good. So we're gonna have to come in and reinforce it all the way about three feet back. We're gonna reinforce across the bulkhead and then we're gonna start our way back. So you guys will get a chance to see how we do that. So let me ask you, because yes. right now looking at this, if I were the customer, I'd be like, why did I buy this boat? <laughs> right now, right now watching this video, I mean, the, the customer's gonna see this video right. when it's done. Right. But right now this is the point that he says, babe, I made a mistake. Um, well, it depends if you got a good deal or not. Well, well, well uh, also, and somebody that knows how to work it, because whoever had this boat before him already spent money to do the same thing and didn't right. do it right. Right. So you basically gave away your money because you were still at the same risk as before. Yeah. So let's show the other stringer also. Um, this one here on the right wasn't as bad as, as the other one, or was it? Well, you can see the crack here at the bottom, and the problem is the lamination. There, oh. there, there, there's no lamination. You can see how that moves. So with this being moving like that, it's not going to work. It's not going to reinforce anything. Another problem that they had is this stringer, you see, it starts from back here. But they came in and they cut out. They notched it right in the middle. So you're weakening out that stringer. That stringer is supposed to be solid. It's supposed to be wrapped in fiberglass. And why? You can why see now, look. Look at the wood inside. Look. I put my finger right through it. Look at that. There's nothing there. Wow. Okay, so what are you gonna do now? Are you gonna cut some more here? What are, what's the next phase that you have to do? Well, the next phase is we're gonna come in, we're gonna cut this out. I'm gonna hollow out the whole transom area. We're gonna cut off the stringer to where we cut the deck off. 
clean everything out, hollow everything out, everything that you see, all that glass they put over that was wrong, all that has to get grinded out. Okay. I'm gonna leave this all on the shelf. Once it's in its original shelf, then from there we're gonna start building stringers, we're gonna build a bulkhead, triple stringers, and the new transom. So you guys are gonna get a chance to look at that as we go. So look guys, I think, I, I look, this is, you guys are boat builders. I mean, you build boats, but also you guys also restore and, and I think, you, are you going to start selling some engines as well or no? Well, we're going to be repowering. You're going to be repowering. So we want to offer that service to our customers. So you can come to us and repower. We're going to be uh, a repower center. Okay. So, so I mean, it's not, it's not like every day you get a boat builder that wants to go ahead and do this type of work, right? Because sometimes they just say, well, we'll just go ahead and, and build the boat and, you know, make money on the new build and that's it. Right. It's easier. This stuff uh, is highly specialized and uh, you guys essentially got to want to do it too. You know what I'm saying? No, of because course, of course. You know, um, we don't only work on Carreras, we do work on other boats. And anytime we see something like this, the thing is once you see it, you want to fix it for them because you feel like you're going to do you know, a good job, of course. And you're worried about the customer going out in this condition. And when being I with their family. This boat, he's yeah. getting ready to use it. And I have to stop him and tell him no. Don't use the boat. Yeah. I have a problem. You can lose your engines. So we got there right on time. We stopped the job. And yeah, as far as the work, we'll pick it up. I saw that you cut here on the stringer here. Yeah, we started cutting here. We're cutting down the stringer because I'm going to eliminate this whole stringer down the middle. I'm doing everything brand new for him as far as the stringers and the bulkhead and the transom as well. So yeah, we already started cutting out. We got to work on it. Um, in a couple days, you guys will see the final results of all the hollowing out and all the grinding. And you'll see it like if it was in, in, in its original stage before the stringers went in. Okay, let's go to the transom. Let's talk about what you've seen in the transom now that we, we did all this. Yeah, I want to show you what's going on here. Come on, guys. All right, guys, remember the bracket for the 36 Carrera? Well, we removed it. Now I'm going to show you guys what's working behind it. So look. This is the bracket here in the back. The main, is, the main areas you want to look for in the corners, where you can see there, where it's had a little humidity there sitting. You can see where it's starting to build up corrosion here. See how it's built up? That's all corrosion there. And you can see this corner over here a little better. You can see the pitting. You can see the corrosion building up. Now, from what you've seen, is this bracket salvageable? This one still is, it's borderline, but yeah, it is salvageable. I'm gonna have my guys, uh, they're gonna sandblast it. They're gonna do a further inspection. And um, if everything is good, I'm gonna try to powder coat it and put it back on the boat. Cool, so you'll take this to, to get sandblasted and powder coated? Yes. And, uh, and they'll do the final, once they do the sandblasting, they can look a little better than me there. They can go a little deeper and they'll be able to see. Now, the good thing about the bracket, the bracket was made very thick. It was a very good made bracket. So that's what's going to help it now. We can go in, we do an epoxy treatment, and we can still use the same bracket without having to do a new one. Now, oh. let me show you guys what it did to the transom. You guys look here in this corner. You can see where the transom was caving in, and the bracket was actually trying to go into the boat. Oh, You guys see all of goodness. that there? Yeah, dude. So we had salt water going in there. So that was already taking in water. And look at this, look at this crack right here. It's already coming inward. See it? So essentially, the pressure and the torque of the engines was pushing in so hard. It push into the hole. And it was about it was to, it was about to, oh man, I would have had, you can see I, both sides. I would have had three Verados, dude, see three it? of them. Hey, you're, you're messing up business, dude. You're messing up business for me, bro. <laughs> you would have had three Verados to pick up. Anything else that you saw um, on the transom when you pulled off that bracket? Well, now it makes it a little easier for you guys to see. But you can see here the bleeding I was talking about. I saw this when I went to go inspection the boat. So you can see that bleeding there. That lets me know it's been bleeding from the inside for a little bit now. So these are little things we look at. And then, of course, you can feel the hollowness that's in here. And, not, hollow, and you're going you're gonna to completely hollow that out now. Yes outside shell okay which is the first lamination other than that everything else being removed everything's going to be new so how much still removing i still got to remove the, the 10 tabs our next thing now we're going to remove but we're pretty much ready for the 
for the grinding. How long is this job going to take you guys to do this type of restoration? This job should take us about two weeks. Okay. A two week job. Um, also know that I can't put all my guys on it to work on it full blast. You know, so guys have other projects and I got to pretty much spread them out. Different guys get on it at a different time. So he's my first guy to get up here. He's going to be doing more of the dirty work. Everything has to do with grinding and cutting out. He's the one going to take care of it for us. Then from there we have another crew member that will take over and go into the stringer part. Cool guys, let's go ahead and uh, get a little deeper into this, get to, to the lamination process and then... Let me show you guys the back. This is the part we cut oh, out. Oh, okay. This is the back here, you get to see on the inside. See all the wood, gone. Somebody came in and put these pieces of wood in. You can tell we're up here. Somebody had already come in and tried to do a little patchwork. So this is the moment that, that you guys break a customer's heart and you tell them, like, hey, you know, this boat's a zombie boat. It's been done, you know, th this is what, an 80 something or? This is an 88 Carrera. 88, so there's a lot that's happened since then. Right. Uh, and we're seeing it now because you're basically undressing the pig. Pretty much. Um, and the customer didn't know prior to this. We did talk to him, we explained to him from our experience already. We know more or less what we're gonna run into when we start taking these things apart. So we don't like to give the customers any surprises. So we had them ready for this before Good. we took it apart. Good. So we already know what he was waiting for. We were waiting for. So now, are you gonna go ahead and completely grind this down to the to the to the to the yeah, glass? I'm gonna, and I'm gonna eliminate everything that's wood at least on this back piece, which is what I'm working on. We're gonna eliminate all the wood. I'm gonna replace that with foam, closed cell foam. Um, we're going to redo all the pieces in the bottom. Of course, eliminate all these screws and everything they got running through there. So when we're done with it, you're just going to see foam and glass, which is the way it should be. All right. Okay. Well, I mean, back in the days, they didn't use as much foam and the technology wasn't the same as it is now. But, but now that they have the option, that, you know, something... I mean, I, I, I'm... I mean, there's still boat builders that like to use wood. You just have to use the treated wood, you have to seal it correctly, and anybody that works on the boat has to know what they're doing and make sure you seal every hole correctly. Wow, dude. And that's, that's, that's the reason why we're doing what we're doing, because at the end of the day, this is where the companies are doing the repowering is not realizing, or at least be able to dig a little bit deep and see, okay, you know, can the boat hold it up? Yeah. Look at the condition of this boat. No, it's crazy. That, those, those engines were not, they no, there's, there. there no, there's, a goner, and there goes the boat for the customer. Now again, no one know the extent of the work that needed to be done or how deep the damages were, but at the end of the day, look, it's right here. Yeah. You know? Well, you know, you guys are taking business away from me though, because I could have fished up those three engines all with a bracket. <laughs> all right, we'll continue, we'll continue guys. Let them continue doing some work, and we're going to do the laminating next. You guys see the water? Oh yeah, look at that water. Look at that. That's that's crazy. No good, man. The customer would have never known though. Would have never known. Never known. Very nice, a very good looking boat. You would have never known that was inside. That's crazy. You know, and it's hard, it's hard to tell somebody. It's hard to tell somebody, hey, guess what? Your boat is rotting from the inside and then on the outside it looks beautiful. Yes. Yeah. So how do you convince somebody to spend a, a lot of money, you know, to restore that? Well, it's not much convincing. The thing you got to do is you got to show them. Yeah. Some people are financially able to do it. Others are not. But we do go out, we do a, do a free estimate, and we do go through all of this, and we do show you guys, and we do find any type of rotting or anything. And then, we, you know, we go from there. We show you guys, we give you an estimate, and if it's something you can take care of, take care of it, you guys. Wow. This is... Dude, look at this. They're everywhere. Everywhere. They're, look at that. Oh, let me ask you a question. Was the Orkin man uh, involved in this actual transaction as well? Was that in the invoice or no? no that, was, that was part of the invoice. That was part of the invoice? The pesticides? Yeah, we're giving business to everybody. Oh my goodness, guys. Hey, honestly. Uh, it's sad, it's sad to, to, to see something like this. And 
and have companies that would not take the extra step to be able to, you know, either educate the customer, mention to him, like, this, this is the problems that you're going to have, uh, this is the condition that your boat really is. So at the end of the day, it's like, you know, it's, you got people on board. You got to make sure that when you do any kind of work like this, you pay attention to what you put in this new power into, you know, and, um, and I understand. I mean, not everybody wants to hear this bad news, but look at this. I mean, no, this, I, proof right here this is crazy. Shows you and tells you that the condition of this boat it wasn't going to open. That's it wasn't crazy. It going to hold up to anything down there, and that guy would have gone out one more time or two more times, and the whole thing would have been gone. Well, he got lucky. You know, he got lucky. He had a couple of days in with the motors and on there, and now when he gets it back, he's going to be, you know, uh, a lot more safe, and, and ultimately that's what we all want. Dude, all of that came from there. That's the transom, guys. That is nuts, that's dude. That's the transom. That's all the filler that was there. Now you guys can see. This is back to its original glass. Once we took everything out, we came across the conclusion that this boat needs to have inboard, which we already pretty much knew. So you guys can see here where the drives used to be. Here's all the original holes. Oh. You can see where the used to be and the exhaust holes. Wow. So we couldn't see none of that before. Once we gutted everything out, we can tell that. Oh. That's so crazy. Because of these exhaust holes is why we were getting those cracks on the other side. That now makes sense. Yes, sir. So somebody who did some type of restoration in the past. Yes. Wow. That's when they removed those uh, inboard engines that were here. They redid the transom. And that's when... Did the customer... What did the customer say when you told him that? Um, he kind of had the idea that it was an inboard because it's such an old Carrera. Back then, you know, most of them were inboards. Yeah. So he had that idea. He just... He didn't expect to see it this way once we uh, took everything apart. So you can even tell, you know, you can tell everything exact, even the holes that it had to mount, you know, the, the drives and everything, it's pretty great. So what's the next step now? What are you guys gonna start doing now? I'm gonna start from the transom back, so you guys are gonna see when we lay down the crucible board. Okay. I'm actually gonna reinforce here first, which is the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna close all these holes. I'm gonna reinforce, and then we're gonna do the crucible board. And okay. I have six materials before the crucible. Once okay. the crucible board gets in, they'll get wrapped with another material and putty at the end to give it all a finish. Hey, you got to tell the customer I want to do a sea trial on this boat when it's done. Oh, yeah, 100%. We're going to have to do that. Yes, sir. 100%. So this is just when you guys get an idea that this is, yeah, once it's all cleaned up, once it's raw, this is what it looks like. We're going to come in, we're going to fill in a few holes you see down here with a, with a good putty that we use, and then we're going to do our new crucible board. From there, you'll see me do the stringers coming out. The stringers will be the last part. Okay. But first, you'll see the board go in. Okay, so we just wanted to give you guys a shot of this. That way you guys see what it looks like. And you can also see what came out of here. That was a transfer. That is absolutely crazy, dude. Wow. You see, this is... Listen, if you don't show this, you can't justify price. Of course. You can't justify price. No, we want people to get an understanding of what it's like yes. to take it apart and what yes. out of here mess that we have to deal with. Crazy, bro. Crazy. Yep. And and the Orkin man had to come and go ahead and, and get those the yep. The termites, baby. All right, guys. Let's continue. Let's continue. All right, guys. So we're here on the outside. I want to show you how it is. Once you only have this layer of fiberglass on, okay. without the transom. Guys, take a look at this. What? See how wobbly that is. Hit it. Hit it with your hand. Oh, my God, right. dude. So once we put this transom in, we're going to do this again. You guys gonna be able to see. Okay. And then we're also gonna show you how we're gonna do a rear support to be able to hold this all in place when we put that material in. So you guys can see that in part of the video as well. Now this this laminating schedule that you guys are using on this particular Carrera, is this something typical that most boat builders or boat restoration guys would do? Um I'm hoping they would. <laughs> okay. You know everybody doesn't work the same, but that's the way we do it. Okay. I'm going to do three layers of material right now just to reinforce this back part after we do the putty in the holes. Then tomorrow in the morning we're going to have three layers go on before we put the booster board on. Okay, so that's what he's doing now. He's putting in that putty. Now he's putting in that building putty there just to uh, cover up those holes. Now you guys didn't expect that you had to do this, right? Because this you found out after the fact. Well, to a certain extent, we didn't know how many holes we had. Okay, yeah, there's. We saw that once we took everything apart. There's a lot. There's a lot of holes you guys got to fill holes. in there. 
There's like what, like 10 different locations. Um, I mean, there's, I'm even, I'm closing all of the bracket holes. I'm closing everything complete. So every hole you see back here is getting covered. Now that'll mix, it, it, it'll dry really, really hard, right? Oh yeah, that there, that is solid, super solid. That's a green putty, it has no fiber inside. That material, once it uh, dries up, is all gonna bond together with this glass, plus the three layers of material that I'm gonna put in to reinforce. Cool. So all of that together is gonna be one solid piece. Nice. Now he'll start taking out all the air voids and all that stuff. Yeah. He'll start rolling it. You'll, you'll see them taking out all the air voids once they start rolling it on. Right now they're just wetting the other side of the material. Anthony, can you tell me a little bit about the resin? I know you guys don't normally like to give away what you use, but can you tell me a little bit about it? Well, I can tell you we use good quality resin. I don't mind telling you guys what we use. I use different resins on different projects, depending on what it calls for. This particular resin is a 344, okay? Um, it's a very good quality resin. That's very important when it comes to doing our glasswork. It's very important you have good resin. That's where in the future you see some boats that are delaminated and have a lot to do with the resin not being a good quality. So we'll let the layers separate. So it's very important to use good materials. All the materials we're using is top notch. Okay, so this is the woven one. Right? This is the 1808 here. So, so, explain why this is important now. So this, is, this obviously, it's woven, so it's going to be much stronger. This is, yes. And heavier. This is going to go next, after that, uh, that chop that you guys see us put on. This is the 1808. We're going to do the same process with this one, lay it out. Make sure it's all spread out evenly. Spray down our resin. And then we like to use as our last material, we prefer to use a 1708. The 1708 is gonna, it's gonna seem better. It's gonna stick together a lot better with the transit. So that's why we use the, the difference in, in the materials. 
Wow, that Don't thing that thing just soaked it up like quick. Yes. You guys can tell the difference in the material now when you look at this one. It doesn't look like a chunk once it's laid down. You guys can see the whole tic tac toe pattern that it has. Yeah. That's where it's all, you know, that's where the reinforcement comes in. boats that have Kevlar? We do reinforce a lot of our boats with Kevlar, yes we do. Is that a customer option or, or, or what, what are the other advantages of Kevlar? Well, it all depends on what the boat's going with. We're, um, like on my podcast, when we use the bigger engine, I like to come in and reinforce everything with Kevlar because we can have more power on the boat. Um, we also do the ganglers, we do a lot of the Kevlar uh, reinforcement on ganglers as well. But all of our boats have the heel, all the skins, Wow, this thing, could, this thing you can put uh, two tanks back there and it's not gonna break. Guaranteed. I'm willing to do a sea trial on this boat then. No problem. I'm willing, I'm willing. No problem. We're not losing a Verado on this one, I guarantee you that. Oh, that's a cheap shot for me. Guaranteed, yeah. That's a cheap shot at me. <laughs> yes, sir. This is the board that we're talking about. This is the Cusa board, guys. I wanna show you guys this is the cutout we're gonna be doing. We're already started cutting it out. This is a cutout for the transom, so this will actually be the transom. So what 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 is this board made of? What is it? Well, the thing with this board is the foam board closed cell, but this board has glass on both sides, so it reinforces this kusa. This kusa is top notch. This is the best best transom board you can use. Is a kusa board. And and do they sell that like the way it is like now or? or? Yes, they do sell this sheet like this. Um, this sheet can run you anywhere up to eight hundred bucks. Like a sheet like this. What? Just this sheet right here? Just this sheet right here. Good lord, guys. Now I know where all the money went. It's expensive. It's expensive. But that's why you see a lot of companies cut corners and use wood or use any other type of material. Okay. What thickness is this here so they know? This is an inch and a half. So we're going an inch and a half on that transom inch plus plus what I already had. Right. Plus the reinforcement we would put in. Plus the extra three I'm gonna put on either side of this. Okay. So you're gonna look at this, it's gonna turn into two inches once I'm done with the materials. So it'll be two inches plus everything else that we added on. At the end, it'll be about three inches of transom. Oh man, that is, that's a lot of materials. So you're, you're talking about in just materials and supply a considerable amount of money. I'm, I'm calculating, because I know the resins are expensive. Yep. The fiberglass is expensive. Putty's expensive, everything. Everything here is expensive, nothing's cheap. Okay, well, you know, that's why doing it right costs one way, right. doing it mediocre costs another way, right. doing it cheap costs you an engine, two engines, three engines. Three engines at this point, yep. All right, all right guys, let's go ahead and fast forward to tomorrow. The following day, Anthony So. What's up, guys? 
So well, it is the following day. We're getting ready to do the acoustic board, which is the transom. Uh, I want to show you guys a few tips that we do here. Um, guys, look back here. You can notice we pre-drilled straight line of holes all the way down. We have about five, six holes on top. We have it in the middle, and we have it all the way at the bottom. I'm going to explain to you what that's for. We like to use these two by fours. We put them back here on the transom. Okay, this is to avoid any type of warping. You don't want to put this like this because it can still warp. So we put it like this. All right, guys? Then I come in and we have uh, six inch bolts that I use to put this through. It's going to go through the transom. It's going to grab that kusa board. It's going to pull that kusa board towards the transom. Okay? That's going to help us to get that to squeeze. We're going to do this in three different sections of the back, just to avoid any warping, all right guys? Now I'm going to show you guys the holes that we do on the crucible board itself, that way we can get it to bleed. So you see guys, so you guys can see there, do a close up on those holes. You guys see all of those holes you see, all the way down? Those are meant for them to bleed. Once I squeeze this crucible board onto the transom, I have to see resin come out the other side of these holes for me to know that this board got nice and tight up against the transom. So I want to see all of these holes bleed out resin. So you guys will be able to see that in a few minutes. Now are those are those uh, screws going to put the pressure to hold that or do you use, use something else? Right. The screws are just to keep it off with some pressure. But at the end, we come in with our special clamps. And these are dressing clamps. We have a special set of clamps that we use. This will slide over the transom, and then you can turn these and squeeze it so you get that, that extra squeeze on everything. Okay. And, and everything's going to be aligned already with the 2 by 4s and all. So my understanding is today they're going to put on that, on this actual transom that's already, that we have three they're coats. They're going to I'm going to put three more layers now Okay. when I put on this piece. So it's going to be wet. Then the Kusa board, and then you're gonna put three more on the Kusa board? After the Kusa board, it will take three more as well. Wow. So it'll be six layers going in today. So, so you have a total of nine? Nine layers that we've done from the beginning, yes. Okay, wow, that, that, that thing should be uh, rock solid and then. It is gonna be rock solid. That's what the customer's expecting from us. All right, let's let these guys work, and uh, we'll showcase some of their work. You guys ready to see this in action? Let's go. Mama. All right, guys, let's get started. Here we go. Chop, chop is That's the first chop. one. It's three chops that we put in. Okay, so 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 there's going to be three different chops, or are we using 1708 or 1808, or we don't no, need? It's going to be three chops. So Cheap. We use the gun. On the other side, we're going to have an 1808, a 2415, and a 1708 to finish it off. Okay. I want to talk about your laminate schedule for your new boats later. Now that people are going to start seeing this type of work done. Sure.
number two, guys. That's the second one. You guys will see Alex will go in there. He's smoothing it out, trying to get a lot of those air voids out. Even though once we get that transom on and we squeeze it, those air voids will be gone. We're trying to eliminate any, any air voids there. Yeah, resin gun, how nice, no overspray, no nothing. See how nice that works? Usually you have to block out this whole area here just to be able to use a machine like that. So what makes that uh, gun so good? Well, it's the actual gun itself and the way it mixes. It mixes inside, so it does less of an overspray when you're spraying. It's less pressure has to come out. You guys can see it's just a stream that comes out. So that helps my guys out a lot too. When it comes to prepping and everything, it, it, it helps big time. Any other uh, resin gun would have had your camera already full of uh, resin, full of overspray. No, no, that ain't happening, bro. That's not happening. Okay, so now we're going on the third layer. Now we're going on number three. Do you have to do anything or spray anything to the CUSA board or just basically push resin. it back to it? That's it, resin. resin. Mm -hmm. You're going to end up seeing that resin going through those holes that we just spoke about. Okay. You guys will get a chance to see that in a second. All right. So I'm assuming that, that that gun has a hardener in it and it's going to just start getting hot, right? That whole transom is oh, going to get really, really hot. Yes. That's the point of us putting those 2 by 4s back here. Because once it gets hot, it intends to warp and it wants to separate from the group. So that's one of the reasons we use those 2 by 4s across the back and also our clamps, the big clamps that we have in. Can you explain to somebody that doesn't know about the, the, the resin with the hardener, how it gets hot? So as it comes out, it fans the hardener right onto the resin. And then once it starts curing, it gets really hot. Like how hot? So they know. Um, it should be at about, I would say anywhere between, it's about 125. About 125 degrees. Okay, so that's the third one. That's the third one. So what he's explaining is the hardener, we regulate the hardener depending on the weather outside and how hot it is. So and moisture, and moisture too. Moisture and the cold it all has to do with it. So we have it adjusted right now to 1.25, which is what we're spraying out on the hardener. What, does does the Corona do anything to to the air to mess up the hardener? If you drink it, yeah, the guys will be crooked like that sideways, so they can't drink Coronas. <laughs> And we're on negative, by the way. We all got tested yesterday. Yes, so yes, yes. Negative. Except for me, because I haven't been tested. That's why you're back there. Yeah, guys, that's why I'm zooming in. So he also put a little bit on the back of it as that's well. The crucible board itself. Yes, guys. You guys will see now. It's going to start sliding it back, sliding it back. Let me go down there guys, I want you guys to see that part as well. Y, y empieza a vomitar completo. Wow. 
Okay guys, so they're telling me that all that resin is going to start coming out from there. And uh, they're putting back the other, the other plywood right now in the back, but I wanted to get you guys this shot. I know I, I guys, I know I sound a little muffled. I have to wear a mask. You know, we have this whole pandemic thing going on and Got a mic, bro. They can't hear you. What? <laughs> So this is the final process. You guys can see here where the holes are bleeding. You can see the resin coming out. Now we're gonna let this sit for 24 hours and you guys will see the next part tomorrow. Let's show them all the... So our mechanism back here. All right, so tomorrow we continue. Tomorrow will be the next part. So guys, this is the bracket from the 36 Carrera. We got it out here waiting now for pickup. Uh, we're going to send it out for powder coating. And next time you see it, you guys won't recognize it. They're going to take all this off too? All of it off. It's only going to get sandblasted. And then it's going to get powder coated. All right. I can't wait to see that. Stay tuned, guys. So, uh, all right. We had, uh, all right. We had a little technical difficulty with this whole build. I wanted to show the whole process. But, Al, what happened? What happened? You, uh... You went out to party and got yourself a uh, COVID-19? No, I didn't Four get it. Half weeks? No. Uh, I, that or you said as an excuse to, uh, to get away and reduce a little vacation time? Uh, no, no. Apparently you said you blamed it to the family dog that got uh, COVID. <laughs> he went to a party, came back, uh, you know, neighborhood dog uh, got himself uh, sick. No, and no. He got it from him. And no, no. Listen, guys. Well, look, re realistically, right? So. While we were filming this, there was, uh, the Rona was really crazy in South Florida and it actually uh, came inside my house. So one of my family members that lives with us uh, ended up getting it. So I had to go ahead and quarantine. Uh, thankfully, um, that person was uh, completely uh, quarantined and we're good. Everyone else in the house was fine. Uh, I got retested, we're good. So now uh, Al actually said, don't come over here with that crap. So, so I, uh... Yeah, that actually made us uh, fall behind two weeks. We've never had this boat ready for the customer two weeks ago. 
but we had to delay the process in the project uh, in order for you to finish what you started. And um, so we, this is now we, a COVID-19 setback. Now we can guide you back. I appreciate that you're back. I got that you are alive and healthy. And now can we please finish? Oh, okay, so, so here's where we, what, 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 what we were at last time. We had just put the board and they started laminating everything. And we kind of showed the process of the lamination and stuff like that. But now let me zoom in because we already have the bracket on. And I'll show you guys the bracket now, guys. Um, one of the things that we noticed and what, what I showed was how flimsy it was and how rotten it was. And one of those things when me and Anthony were walking the boat, um, it, it was a huge problem. But now, I mean, dude, guys, look at this. Let me, let, me, let me show you guys what's going on here. So the stringers were already done. And now... Take it. No, no. <laughs> I did the same thing earlier and I hurt myself. Give, give me a hammer. This is so, so guys, solid. it's 100% it's solid now. And the customer's going to be able to, to trust it. The stringers have also been fixed from here. Remember, they, the, the customer wanted to do from here to the way back. Let me show you behind. Um, you guys actually had uh, Miami powder uh, Miami paint. Powder, uh, yeah. Paint the, uh, they used some powder coat and on the, on the bracket. So let's go ahead and see a little bit of that so you guys can see that. Oh no, there's, I mean, I'll tell you what, if, if you want, just so everybody's certain that it's gonna hold a lot of weight, I'll stand on the back bracket and we'll be, you know, we'll see if, if it holds me. Okay, Al, so what, what, uh, what are we now, for instance, the bracket is on, you see all the work that's already been put on. I saw that you guys also painted the back of the transom yes, the same color. The same orange, the customer preferred you wanted the uh, orange color to match the side of the boat, so we went ahead and took care of that. So, from what I recall, this has trips, right? This, this boat has yeah. trip, triple trip, 350s. Trip, triple 350s. Yeah. There's no way that that boat would have survived in the water longer periods no. without this whole back end falling off. We would have probably been able to go out one or two times the most. It was already falling apart. And uh, thank God you got it on time and you were able to do the work for him. So we're very happy with these of the work that we have done. And so, so what would you tell somebody that ha maybe might now, this might highlight a situation for them. They're, they might be like, you know what? I just started looking at my boat and my boat might have the same issue or might have the same, you know, cracks and things that are showing stresses within the actual structure of the, of the boat. What would you I recommend? Uh, repowering the boat. Um, have a, you know, professional take a look at what the transom looks like, whether inside looks like it, it's going to be able to hold up that extra weight and power that you put on to the new boat to your, to your boat and kind of prevent it from creating a disaster later on. You know? A lot of so repowers. I encourage them to take a look at that first and plan on fixing that first before they get to repower and spend all the money on those new engines that it's going to be a, a very happy moment when they install it but a very sad moment when they see, see them fall out. You know, so. Uh, Always take the precautions and the steps to be able to take a look at it. And we'll be, we'll be able to do it here for free. Take a look at it for them and uh, advise them what needs to be done to be able to add that extra power that they're looking for. Now, Al, this is the inside area right here, right? The, this yes. is where, okay, so I saw that that was worked as well. They took off all the foam and they put new, they, 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 they took out all the wood, yeah, everything. Yeah. All right. You're gonna connect the boats to what we call a 21 cc. The 21. Tell them about the that 20 21 cc. Is specially made for this one special engine that is uh, yes. uh, your famous 300. Yes, the so Sunk Verado is going so on that a 300. Sunk Verado is gonna go on that 21. I'm gonna show and prove everyone not only will the 21 is capable, but what that engine. Yes. Is capable and, yes. And the, you know how that engine has uh, come back to life thanks to you and all the support of everyone. Around. Everybody helped me, guys. It wasn't just me. There's guys. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of people doing that. Before, because I know Anthony's gonna come back and we'll show some of the rest of the stuff. Can you walk with me real quick? Because in this video, I wouldn't mind showing that flat cat. Dude, can we show a little bit of it? Show a little bit. We're uh, actually uh, 
Uh, all right, all right. Get ready to finish uh, it up. So let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's check it out. Wow. Wow. All right. Guys, I didn't even know you guys, they had moved it, right? So yes. here's, the, here's the Carrera, right, that they're working on. But this was on another bay. So this is where, so we're way far along. Everybody, I, I get messages all the time. What's up with the Verado? And now they sell the Verado painting. I said, listen, it's all on Carrera now, baby. I, my job is done. We're going to put this on the flat cat. Can we talk a little bit about this boat that it's going to go on? Sure, absolutely. So, so, so let's tell them some of the, the I don't know, let, let's, let's talk to them and tell them about how this thing is, is made, first of all. Can we uncover a little bit of it or no? We can cover a little bit. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, guys. <laughs> we can't see any more than that. Dude, you're horrible. Hey, this, this boat I, has, been, has been especially made to, yes. um, we had to build it in a way that can hold up not only your 300, but after your 300, wow. it's going to come up with a, a 400 on it. So we've had to do some modifications, some changes, and some this, lamination uh, changes as well. This boat is going to have a 400 after we run the Verado? After we run your 300 <laughs> and we successfully show what it can do, okay. thanks to your engine, we will put on a uh, 400 on it. Okay. So look, for the record, I probably won't open it wide open with the 300. Not me. <laughs> I got to make sure my life insurance is all ready to go. Um, but we will run it hard, but with a 400, oh my God, I, I can't even imagine this thing. This well, thing with a 400 is going to be... A uh, 100 mile per hour boat. It should be. Uh, we're hoping that the changes that we did and, uh, and the lamination that we created for this particular boat will help us to give that stability that we're looking for at that high speed. Now, I don't recommend it for everyone. It's not something we're going to factory sell with that power. Mm -hmm. uh, but I am definitely going to be the one on it. And I'm definitely going to be the one trying it. <laughs> and I'm definitely going to be the one enjoying the crap out of it. But I will, I do want to put a 400 on it. I want to know oh, what's cool. the max power I can put into this small boat. And how much but but you reinforce the transom with Every, Kevlar. Everything. This is there, there's guys. This is fiberglass Kevlar, um, all reinforced for for that amount of, right. of power that's and, going to be on it. Distribute it properly because we got to have the weight distribution because we're putting so much weight on the back and so much power on the back that we don't want this boat to lift. So Dude. we're hoping that. <laughs> Our Wait. history of racing, our history of building, Wait. Wait. what I've learned from the original guys and uh, the support that I've got from, from the Picon family as well as my staff, that we can make this thing go, but um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Not only with the 300. <gasps> with the 400. With the 400 uh, uh, All right. So, guys, if you haven't seen this actual boat, we did a video. Um, it, was it in the Everglades? Well, it was, yeah, we it was, it, it was kind of in the Everglades. And we ran it with the 150. The 150, yeah. 150, and it flew. And it's a nice ride. I actually went fishing with Monster Mike and Brian, the CEO. Cool video to watch. You, you could have been there, but you decided to be in the truck all day. Yeah, I was the one uh, sitting in the truck, babysitting the, uh, the equipment and the trucks, and I had to sleep for about I, six hours. I told him, hey, listen, it's going to be a long time. If you want, you can come with us. He's, no, 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 no. Uh, all of a sudden, I see text messages going to Anthony. Bro, until when? Yeah, that's not what he said, gentlemen. He said, uh, just wait here, we'll be back in about 30 minutes. And I got scammed by sitting around for about six hours. Well, listen, sometimes I was with two legendary YouTubers, Monster Mike and, and Brian the and CEO. Brian CEO. So, all right, so you guys saw it here first. The owner Carrera, we're running. Actually, I'm, I'm ready for you guys to just take this boat, put yep. it on the trailer, and get it from the shop. The, the, the boat, is, the, the motor's at the shop. So stay tuned for that. We're gonna continue this build. I just wanted to talk about this within this cool build. We kind of missed a little bit of the process, but let's get the guys putting this back on because they're about to put it on. So let's get these guys going. They're putting in the back now. Let's go ahead and start seeing them put this in. Let's get these guys.
now what they'll do guys they'll start painting the rear here uh, make make sure they get everything in there right and uh, I'm really excited about this I mean we, we put a lot of effort in this video guys I know it, it, it you guys are seeing like a, a pretty long video on YouTube but there's there's countless days of filming here and regrettably I had to quarantine myself from these guys because <laughs> look at that Let me jump in here, guys. I'm gonna put on my mask. Where's my mask? You gonna jump in there? I have to, oh, bro, that's, because that the that, that's the test that right there. 230, what, what you, hey, what, that's a, that's. Oh, what? 180. Bro, that's a that's a t that's a cheap shot. All right, guys, hold on. Damn, it would have been 100 percent if Anthony was here. See, Anthony Tagi. Oh, yes. Then we would have known for sure, guys. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me jump in here. Let me jump in here, guys. All right, guys. Wow. Hey, guys. My name is Alfred Montan, and I'm going to show you guys how we get five guys. Well, one overweight, but I don't know how much these guys weigh. We're going to show you how this whole transom was rebuilt to get to this point. So jump up and down. It's not moving anywhere. Coño. One of the things that, that I, I was talking to how about and uh, and I definitely want to get the perspective of the customer is is the amount of money that that person is saving by doing a job like this so uh, is this job for everybody no absolutely not but there's there's a possibility for instance there's still wood in this boat not from the transom, because that's all been redone, but from the, from, from the midship all the way to, to, to the bow of the boat. So, will it be an issue later? Who knows, you know? More than likely, most of the, the strain that's put on the boat is gonna be on, on the transom. So, uh, they're not gonna have problems there. You guys saw exactly how that was modified and stuff. So, let me get in there uh, before they get deeper into this cleaning process because I, I don't want to go ahead and dirty the, their work so I just I literally just asked Al I asked him I said bro do you want me to vi film you and he goes listen we got to deliver and uh, it's late in the day on a Friday and uh, he wants everything that leaves here perfect hey I commend you for for being such a perfectionist I, I, I'm almost thinking that you're a Virgo. A Gemini, buddy. A Gemini. You Geminis that can relate, go ahead. You go ahead and... The screw is not perfect. That man right there, it which only, is great. It so, only takes a minute to make things right. Only takes yeah, a yeah. minute to make it right. That's it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, nope. yeah. Why not? That's, that's, a, that's a good analogy. Why not? The customer's here now. Like I said, guys, I, I definitely want to talk to the customer. And uh, I'm going to jump inside now. We're going to put the, the seat, and then I'm going to jump inside so you guys can see the finish uh, of how everything came through. It's real, real nice. All right, so here's the, the bracket. They, they, I told them not to install it real quick so that I can show and film there. So remember, this whole back seat, this back piece, was reinforced and if you look also this was also redone here if we get a close-up on all the gunnels were redone in the back as well of the boat and then those doors were put back which were on there before and guys this thing is solid now absolutely solid the stringers are solid and uh, the customer is gonna have a, a boat that he's not gonna have to worry about anymore. So obviously they're gonna finish cleaning this up now. Hopefully maybe we can get a sea trial with this guy and we can see this bad boy with three triple Mercury's. Brand new Mercury's. Three of them guys, who knows what'll happen. I don't know. Hey, stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching my channel. I'll show you, I'll show you the very, I'll show you the very last bit before we go. I'm out of here. All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be in the AC right now. 
feels good. But, but one of the most asked questions that I get is how much? So, I, and I don't expect you to, to give a price range for what has just been done because I'm sure every do job is a little different, right? Yeah, that's correct. Um, I'm assuming, I'm assuming, this is my assumption and correct me if I'm wrong, once you get deeper into the boat, you can have an idea of what it's going to cost. And when you get deeper into the boat, you find more problems and that can affect the price? Yes. Yes. Normally, we always tell the customer way up front. Okay. A price up to where we can see okay. the damages on the boat. All right. Once we take things apart and we are able to go deeper into uh, the boat itself, into the areas that are damaged, we call the customer back in to explain to them and to let them know this requires more repairs or we need to go more deep okay. into the uh, the boat itself. Um, always up front with the customer. We'll give them uh, an initial price okay. with a possibility that it could be more or it yeah. could be the same or it could be even maybe a little bit less when we uh, get to uh, work, start working on it. I I'm sure you guys encountered a couple of surprises on this guy, on, yes, on, this, on yes. this boat. Yeah, on this boat, it's uh, quite a few. Uh, but thank God they were up to the point that we needed to work. Everything was great. Um, we did a final, or a few little adjustments, okay. but nothing that that uh, had to increase any pricing on this customer. Uh, we made some recommendations and so certain things that you need to do oh. in the future. Okay. Um, because there are certain areas that are not as good as it should be. Of course, uh, still, still the, he's right. probably on a budget right. and, and uh, so, okay. So having that said, what size is that boat? It's a 36. 36. If that boat comparable in 2020, okay, was were to be purchased brand new with three triple three fifties, like it has, what would that boat go for more or less? Oh, in the high 300s? In the high 300,000 guys. So this is, this is, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to let people understand this. Okay. Because whatever your number you tell me, okay, which I don't know, that is going to say, Hey, I can fix it right. And it's never going to be a brand new boat because you obviously said there might be issues in other areas that you guys didn't work on, but you can have the area where it's going to have the most stress taken care of. And you're not going to have to worry about that. So arranging, you don't have to commit to a price, obviously, but for this 36 with triple three fifties, uh, bracket, powder coat, all that stuff, give me a range between X and X price wise so they can know what to expect to do it the proper way. Well, this was uh, a range of 36 based on the conditions of this one, anywhere from 12.5 to about $16,000. Okay, so 12.5 to about $16,000. And this goes back to what I wanted to stress. Looking at it in numbers, it's a no brainer, right? You have a 36 foot boat that has good power. I mean, I'm assuming the power is good, no, right? He put brand new, yeah. brand, new brand new motors. Brand new motors. So brand new motors, you know, if the guy wants to work on the boat later, little by little later, then he can do that. Uh, cosmetically, it's going to look perfect once you guys are done with it. Yes. Right. So, so it's going to essentially look great. Uh, now the some other areas where you didn't work might have issues because it's an older boat But the average person won't know that and the customer who has the boat is gonna be feel comfortable that he's in a safe boat you Absolutely. Know? Uh, you know people are very surprised when we actually tell them and I come out uh, even myself or Anthony and they're looking at Cairo power boats and we manufacturing our own boats and they're saying yeah. uh, You're not throwing me to buy a new one. I said no, it's, it's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to you and know that's... repair your boat go over your boat and uh, spend the money to be able to say, you know, let me enjoy this boat versus having to spend two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars on a new boat. Yeah. Um, any boat right now out there is not cheaper than a hundred grand. So you're talking about from a from a small twenty something footer to a mid twenty three, twenty six, up in the mid one hundreds, the thirties and thirty twos and thirty threes are up in the high hundreds to the mid two hundreds. Yeah. So you're talking about some serious some serious money. So it's it's I want the people to fall in love again with their boat. I don't yeah. care what brand it is or what type of boat it is, is you know, fix it and going back and, 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 and spend the money on a boat that is, is worth keeping. And now you know you got something another 10 more years down the road. Yeah. And enjoy your fishing or enjoy your outing to the sandbar. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank Al and the people here at Carrero. The guys did a fantastic job with this video. Um, please don't forget to smash that like. 
I guess the next thing they're going to see us do is that song for Rado. Yes. Uh, we are, and you know what, we want to say thank you. We really want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to put that engine on our 21. Well, you guys show me love from the beginning, so you know. I, I know, but that's that's a lot. That means a lot to me, yeah. and I'll take that very, very serious. And Carrera is a powerful name in South Florida, guys, and I want to make sure they came back and I was like, you know what? If it's not going to be on a rib boat, it's going to be on a Carrera. So that's, we, that's what we're going to do. But I ain't driving at no 100 miles an hour. That's, that's you guys. Oh, come on. That'll be Anthony. Anthony likes all that crazy stuff. All right, guys. Well, like I said, don't forget to smash that like. We're out of here. And uh, amazingness. That's what we do. Thank you so much. All right, guys. The boys from Carrera. Guys. Oh my goodness, they are flying, bro. No, that boat is fast, bro. Guys, it doesn't translate. Wait a second. Guys, let me get a little further so you guys can see what's going on here. Wow, that thing is flying, bro. Doubt, it's introduced to your mind through fear. But what if we don't have fear and we were not scared to fail? What can you accomplish? Your goals, your dreams, the only person stopping you is you. First cast the doubt and the fear of failure will follow. Remember, failure is a part of success. Come on now, come on, won't you come with me? Time to let it go and be free Won't you come and breathe the open skies? Come now, come listen to the melody Slow it down, put yourself at ease Time to live it live Get away from the deuce and do
Come